Hello my crafty friends. Today I'm sharing a pop-up card I made with Karen Berniston's new Biddy Ball pop-up. So I kept the front very simple um, because the card displays open and all the fun is on the inside. So it's a plain um, heavyweight craft cardstock base. This is an A2 size card which folded is four and a quarter by five and a half and Karen Berniston designed the Biddy Ball pop-up to fit inside an A2 card whereas the um, previously released surprise ball pop-up needs about a five inch five and a half inch width. Um, and the, they're designed to work together where you can stack a smaller bitty ball on top of the larger surprise ball and uh, add some of the animal add-ons and you have um, you've got a smaller head and a bigger body and there's all kinds of samples on the Karen Berniston pop-up peeps Facebook page if you're interested so I created a belly band to keep the card closed and used some doodle bug embellishments as well as some sparkly uh, stickers from my stash and um, Nouveau drops. So the belly band is just made from some flowered patterned paper and I always have a full supply list on my blog post which will be linked below. So you slide off the belly band and boing. How fun is that? So that is the new Biddy Ball pop-up. And I made a unicorn. A few weeks ago, I made a unicorn flip frame pop-up and at that point said I wanted to try doing a Biddy Ball single layer unicorn. And so that's what inspired this card today. The pattern paper that I used is double-sided, so the flower print is on one side and this pretty yellow polka dot is on the other, and I like how well they coordinate. So that's what I did, and then I had somewhat of a less busy side to add the, the bitty ball to. She was cut out of white cardstock, and the layers are a text weight paper, actually, but and it's going to be really hard to see in the video, but it has sparkle on it. I used the animal add-ons one for the ears and then cut a horn, added some more embellishments from the Doodlebug Odds and Ends package. This is a stitched wavy frame from Your Next Stamp and I stamped a sentiment from Tailored Expressions there. And again, more of the stickers and the cloud is a Doodlebug came from the same package. The banner is actually a very old package, or from a very old package from Martha Stewart that I rediscovered when I was tidying at my craft room. So I do want to keep using those. And I used, because I have, I think, a million came in the package of number 16 elastics for the surprise ball. I do not need any more elastics. I have elastics to last me two lifetimes. So I didn't want to go buy another bag of elastics and I'm trying to stay home as much as possible anyhow. So I just tied, I think about five knots in my elastic to make it work for the bitty ball. But you can see there's lots of, lots of boing <laughs> in that. And you can see how well it folds into a A2 sized card. And this one, because I used text white paper and kept the depth down and the weight down, I think this will also mail for a single stamp. But if not, and I have to add a second stamp, I'm not worried about it because I think when you've put this much effort into a card, it's adding an, ex an extra stamp is no big deal. Now to do the horn, I tell you, this horn took me as long as making the entire card. So I thought I would show you what I do, so save you guys some time. Basically, I took a triangle of the gold glittered cardstock. And if you're gonna try it, do it with scrap paper, or scrap cardstock first, so you get a feel for it. So, and this is larger obviously than what I used there, but I just wanted to show you. So I cut a triangle, I scored it across the bottom, and that can be adjusted when you tuck it in. Then I cut a wedge out of the center and I actually did a fold. Now I didn't crease the fold really strong, I just want the, to be able to fold around the bitty ball. So let me pull this up a little bit and you can see inside here how 
one half goes on either side of the corner of the bitty ball there. So once you have that done, you can determine how deep these need to be. So if I was to put this in now, it would probably stick up above the bitty ball, but it might work perfectly for the surprise ball pop-up. So it's a play as you go. I don't have precise measurements for you again. It will depend on what look you're going for, what supplies you're working with, but I wanted to show you that that's how I came up in the end. That's how I came up with a horn that worked for my unicorn bitty ball. If you enjoyed my video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more of my interactive cards. And that is it for me today.